Hello everybody, I'm Eleonora Gaietti from Politecnico di Torino and today I will present you my work on the implementation in open form of this new um, RANS model. So I will go through an introduction on the RANS equations and then the aim of my work, uh, the model formulation, a little bit of verification and validation and then the conclusions. So as many of you may know, um, Runs, most of the RANS equations, so Reynolds average Navier Stokes equations, are based on a linear eddy viscosity models, which in turn is based on the Boussinesque approximation that Reynolds stresses in turbulence um, are proportional to an eddy viscosity, as you can see here, and uh, are also directly proportional to the mean strain rate. The eddy viscosity is then modeled as uh, uh, the square root of the kinetic energy divided by the uh, dissipation rate, turbulent dissipation rate. At the bottom part of the slide, you can see a generic transport equation for a generic variable phi um, with a rate of change and convection, and then the diffusion of the variable, and the rate of production and extraction, turbulent production and extraction of the variable. So one of the many limitations that uh, two equations runs models have uh, is the fact that uh, there is a, a direct link between uh, stress, the Reynolds stresses and uh, mean strain rate, uh, because there is uh, a direct proportionality between the two tensors. So this uh, results in the fact that the two tensors are aligned in the model, which is not uh, really the case in all the turbulent problems. So. This in turn re results in an overestimation of the turbulent production when there is misalignment between these, between these two tensors. So one way to overcome this issue is to introduce a new uh, variable to account for this misalignment, this lag between stress and strain, and uh, it is called stress-strain lag, and uh, it can be de defined as uh, the um, normal wall velocity fluctuations, the square root of the normal wall velocity fluctuations divided by the kinetic energy. And uh, this variable phi is a, a dimensional. So the aim of my work is the development of uh, this model, k epsilon lag elliptic blending model, which takes into account uh, this uh, lag between stress and strain, and also an additional blending at wall of the variables. And uh, the aim of my work is the development of this model in open form. Then uh, some verification and validation through benchmarks and code-to-code -code benchmarks in comparison with uh, uh, other uh, runs equations and uh, if uh, the case less or experimental data. So um, why this model between many others? Because uh, in literature, you, you can find that uh, this um, K epsilon lag EB model uh, may perform better compared to other RANS equations or other models. And uh, uh, both in um, benchmark cases and uh, real case studies. For example, in the F part of the slide, you can see that uh, the uh, red dashed line representing uh, the elliptic blending model is the one that uh, best, best uh, approximate the, um, uh, the dot blue lines, the dot blue line, which represent the uh, experimental data for this benchmark case of a uh, and faulty junction. So where there are two different fluid mixing and, uh, and there is a junction between the two. In the right part of the slide, you can see a real case scenario. This is a, a mini channel smoke up. And uh, it was found that uh, the laggy B K epsilon model can perform can overall perform better than, uh, for example, K omega SST and realizable K epsilon. So how to derive the K epsilon laggy B? Um, it is based on the LET blending Reynolds stress models, which was uh, uh, developed by Manso in 2014. And this model is a Reynolds stress model. So eight equations, so six equations, more an equation for the epsilon, more plus a, an equation for this uh, LT blending at wall. And it is already present in open form and is called ABRS um, model. So you know, the, the other um, 
parent of the um, present model is the so-called stress strain lag at the viscosity model is a, a three equations model so k epsilon and phi and it was developed by revel in 2006 uh, from these two main parents came the k epsilon lag elliptic blending model which uh, takes into account uh, the lag between uh, strain and uh, stress plus uh, an elliptic blending uh, of the variables at walls at wall and it is and uh, so it has uh, equation transport equations for k and epsilon for uh, phi and then an elliptic equation for an elliptic blending parameter called alpha which is a dimensional in open form is already present a model which is very similar to this one in this called the k epsilon v2 model but the main differences are that um, in this model, instead of uh, um, modeling uh, um, a dimensional variable, it is modeled uh, directly the fluctuations, uh, the square root of the fluctuations of the velocity um, normal to the walls. And um, the, instead of, of just have a simple elliptic blending equation for a dimensional parameter, the uh, elliptic uh, relaxation factor is a frequency and the equations is more complex. So how it is formulated? We have uh, the standard transport equation, as you can see in the top part of the slide. And uh, the first modif modification to this model is the fact that uh, both uh, K and epsilon and, and also um, phi equation have a different, a slightly modified effective viscosity, as you can see, because the viscosity is divided by two. Then there is a, an additional fourth equation, which is an elliptic equation, so less complex to model than a transport equation for this parameter, elliptic blending uh, factor. And then in the epsilon equation, there are uh, some, there is uh, an additional production uh, term which takes into account uh, um, alpha, so the blending, and uh, the mean strain rate with respect to the standard epsilon model. And then in the phi uh, transport equation, there are production destruction terms, uh, which depends uh, um, again on uh, the elliptic blending factor, on the mean strain rate, uh, vorticity and these of the tensors. Um, and then mo most important, uh, the eddy viscosity takes into account also the lag parameter as you can see from the bottom part of the slide. And in these models also, uh, a, realizability, um, a realizability option has been implemented with a limiter on the turbulent time scale. Uh, what about boundary conditions for this model? Both uh, alpha and phi don't need the uh, wall functions. So they are quite simple for the boundary conditions because you can impose uh, zero at uh, walls for both variables. And then you can impose a zero gradient at the outlet for both variables. And at the inlet, for the elliptic bending factor, you can impose also zero gradient. And for the uh, phi variable, you can impose uh, whatever you want. For example, a good choice is a two third, which is uh, the um, value of phi in an isotropic flow. And it came from his uh, definition. For what concern uh, concerns the other uh, boundary conditions, so uh, turbulent kinetic energy, turbulent dissipation rate, and turbulent viscosity, you can use uh, uh, whatever you use for k epsilon turbulent model in open form. So uh, the first uh, uh, com degree convergence study of uh, for the model, I have um, performed uh, simulations on a 90 degrees pipe band, and um, of which I, I will talk more about later. And I've just uh, assessed the fact that uh, decreasing the cell size, the um, res the results have a converging trend, which is uh, what I expected from the model. So then I have uh, um, assessed the, the validation of the model with two benchmark cases. So the backward facing step and again, the 90 degrees uh, pipe bend. Concerning the backward facing step, uh, I've uh, taken the case from the form tutorials. And uh, uh, this is a, a two-dimensional incompressible case. I've um, used a simple algorithm with uh, an upwind second order scheme for convection and turbulence. And I've used the lower world class uh, treatment. So in the right part of the slide, you can appreciate uh, the pressure coefficient uh, after the step. Uh, and I have... Um, 
compared the experimental data with the uh, results from the Lucky B model in StarCCM Plus, computed with StarCCM Plus, with OpenFOAM and also the K-Omega SST model in OpenFOAM. As you can see, the three models perform quite uh, similarly, and uh, the three of, of them perform a little bit uh, poorly near uh, the step, but uh, they are more or less the same uh, trend. Uh, again, on the web processing step, um, I've also looked at the uh, fluid flow profile after the step at different locations. And again, the three models don't have significant differences between them. And uh, again, there are some problems mainly in near wall uh, region. So um, for the 90 degrees pipe band, the 90 degree pipe band, pipe band is a, has a very long inlet to be sure to have a fully developed turbulent flow. And here you can see a comparison between the uh, results from the K-Epsilon like EB model in computer in open form and in Star CCM Plus. So they don't have significant differences. You can see, for example, in the right part of the slide, which uh, where I um, assessed the, the relative difference uh, field map between the, the two fields that uh, the highest uh, relative error arrived, arrives at uh, uh, more or less 20%, but uh, it's in a very small section and probably it's due to some sheer stress that uh, maybe I didn't uh, uh, catch them catch very well, but for the main flow, uh, the, the relative difference is quite low. So this is a uh, Again, an incompressible uh, problem. I've used, again, a simple algorithm up in the second order schemes and uh, low oil well pass treatment. I have also compared the uh, results from the K-Epsilon Lucky B model with the K-Omega SST model, and then with uh, some less data that I've found in the literature. And uh, you can see that the uh, Lucky B model and K-Omega SST model as we already see, seen, as we already saw, perform similarly. But the K-Omega SST model has a more and worse recirculation downstream the band with respect to the less data. So here I've also uh, looked at the profile instead of uh, the map of the uh, velocity magnitude, uh, again for uh, Lagi B model in open form star and K Omega SST model in open form. And I've compared them with uh, experimental and rest data. And you can see again that uh, um, the Lagi B model implemented in open form is uh, very, very near to the star CM plus uh, Lagi B results. And uh, the, uh, they catch quite, quite well the, the experimental and rest data. While, for example, the K-Omega SST model uh, perform, performs poorly compared to, to the Lagi B model, uh, because again, as we already uh, saw in the previous slide, it, it, there is more circulation, more circulation in the profile. Uh, so to conclude, I have uh, um, implemented this model in open form, and then I have uh, assessed uh, the performance compared uh, uh, to the commercial software Star CCM Plus, and I found a consistent behavior with the, the results. And um, also, as already found in literature, the lag EB elliptic blending, the lag elliptic blending Epsilon model performs uh, uh, better in some cases with respect to the K Omega SST model. And uh, my model is available on GitHub. Okay. 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 Could you see the 
Thank you for your question. Yes, you're totally right because uh, the the cells near the the step are quite uh, coarse. But the fact is that I took the tutorial from uh, the phone tutorials, and uh, I didn't want to. I didn't have very much time, so I took the tutorial and I wanted to assess uh, actually the the performance of uh, implemented method with respect to the other method. And then for sure, I think that uh, if I refine the mesh there, maybe the the trend just near the step would improve. You are right. Yes. Yes. Yes, you are totally right. Yes, you are right, but uh, the differences are low anyway, because they're anyway below the five percent more or less. But uh, the mm, case is the same, same mesh and same geometry. So uh, I don't know why in Star System Plus uh, it performs different. No, I, I run it. Yes, I've used the uh, um, uh, mixing and uh, I, I don't remember the right name, but uh, the one in which you impose the mixing and uh, mm -hmm. and the turbulence intensity. But then the fact is that in the CM plus, uh, I checked the documentation, but then I don't know really something about, for example, in the wall treatment, there are significantly significant differences with respect to open foam. So maybe it's also due to this, I don't know. No, you're right, you're right. But uh, since since it's a commercial software, I don't know, in some, in some cases, I, I'm not able to, 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 to say, to say, well, it's really implemented like that, or maybe there are some strange things. So. Okay, uh, in the two cases that uh, I performed are quite simple cases. So there are no very complex geometries or anything like that. So actually I used a very high uh, relaxation factor. Mm, for the uh, for the alpha parameter, actually you can use a very high relaxation factor like uh, 0 0.99, something like that, because uh, since uh, you already impose uh, what uh, should be more or less the uh, field, during the simulation, because you impose zero and then one in the as in as the initial condition in all the field, it has no major problem to converge. Uh, while for the leg parameter, I anyway used a high relaxation factor. I think like uh, zero point seven or zero point eight. Mm. But uh, in in for these cases, there are no major problems. For more complex problems, usually I run a, a potential form uh, before uh, the, the problem just to, to have uh, an overall uh, generic uh, condition. Or you can also run before a standard epsilon model that converges uh, more easily. And then at a certain point, switch to the lagalytic uh, model so that you also have uh, the K and epsilon field already more or less converged. In the Thank you. Good morning. 